How do ferrite cores work? That's a reasonable question. I bet you've all seen ferrite cores. You know, you've seen those lumps on cables. That's a ferrite core. How do they work? What do they do? We're gonna war we're gonna tell you all about it. Okay, Archie in Panama City, Florida wants to know, and Archie writes, "Hello, Paul. I don't quite understand the use of ferrite cores. They are found on DC power supplies, AC power cords. Maybe they're on." Uh, those mysterious wart-like bulges on speaker cables, or even found on interconnects. What do they do, and why are they there, and are they useful? They are useful. We certainly use them in some of our products. Inside, typically, I don't like what they do on cables, but, but specific to audio. But we'll go through all that. So. A ferrite core is a lump of the material ferrite. And ferrite is a ferrous material. Ferrous meaning magnetic. It's iron. Okay? It's not actually iron, but it's right. So if you, a lot of magnets are made out of the material ferrite. There are ferrite magnets, iron magnets, uh, ceramic magnets. There's a number of things, but uh, that are known as ferrous, but they, it's a magnetic material. So if, and we know that with a magnet, if you pass a current near a magnet, we, we, we like that, right? Magnets passing near coils of wire create electricity. Coils of wire moving, uh, you know, near a magnet do the same thing. Um, coil, and so, a, 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 Coil, well, let's see if we can make this even simpler. I was going to get, I, I, I want to I move away from making it too complicated. Basically, a ferrite is, is non-magnetic, even though it's magnetic, you know, it's ferrous material, but it is not a magnet, okay? It acts like a coil of wire, which is kind of interesting. So if you want to make a filter, if you want to make something that will have a rising impedance with frequency, then a coil of wire, a coil, is what you would use, right? You would take wire and you'd coil it up, and depending on the number of coils of the wire, more, more, more turns of coils will, will have lower frequency. Then when you pass a signal through it, the signal will pass through just fine, and then as the frequency starts going up, like for noise, or if you have like a computer digital things coming through and you don't want all that high frequency stuff, you can put a coil of wire there. Now the problem with coils of wire is that it adds a lot of resistance that we may not want and it's expensive. So one of the things you can do is you can take a little donut of ferrite and slip it over the wire. Now what happens is as the current is passing through the wire, it builds a magnetic field inside of this lump of ferrite. And when that energy goes towards building a magnetic field, it doesn't go down the wire because you're using it somewhere else. And that energy, the, the, the higher the frequency, the greater that this ferrite uh, will start becoming a magnet. And as it becomes a magnet, it's taking energy. That energy is the higher frequency that we don't want. Okay, and so it's kind of perfect. So you just slip this over and all of a sudden it's like you added a coil of wire. Now, they have all sorts of uses, U U USB cables, all kinds of digital things in order to cut down on the radiated noise that comes out of these cables. They slip a ferrite bead. It's cheap, it's easy. You just slap it over and it just works. We use beads, um, oh boy, we put them on uh, in order for us to pass our, what we call the, the EMI, the electromagnetic induction or the radiated noise coming from our equipment. We're required by uh, CE and, and all the regulatory agencies to keep radiated emissions at, uh, at a low point. And we have to, well, we, geez, we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a year taking them to labs and measuring and making sure that our products meet CE standards. So what'll happen is we'll take it, it'll go, you're just a little bit too high over here, and they'll poke around the whole thing. So inside, 
on say the AC or maybe on a ground will slip a bead over and that'll reduce the emissions enough that we can pass. Good job, done. All right, so that's what they do, that's what they are. I don't like them particularly on audio gear because I don't like rising impedances on audio gear. I like straight, you know, the wire to be as thick and heavy as possible, the lowest impedance we can attain, and I would much prefer to get rid of noise in other ways like shielding, geometry, construction of the cable. As soon as you put on those ferrite beads in an audio situation, I think it really ah, kind of strangles the sound, I, and I don't like it. So I would stay away from it, e even on power cables. I don't like it on power cables. Big lumps on a power cable I would avoid like the plague, because, as we've talked before about regenerators, you don't want impedance. You want low impedance. You don't want high impedance, right? You want no impedance. And adding a ferrite bead gets us in trouble. So, okay. I hope that helps. Thanks. Bye.